Thank you, Father. Well, let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Several years ago, there was this wealthy woman who was attacked by the devil so badly that she spent everything she had and there was not any doctor could do to help her. Finally, she came to the headquarter church because somebody invited her. And as we were about to preach like this, I asked that everybody should shout. And as she was shouting, out of her mouth came a worm. I want to decree tonight that as we worship God, every plant that God has not planted in your body will come out. So I want you to go ahead and worship the Almighty God. Go ahead and bless His holy name. Go ahead and give Him glory, give Him honor. Give him adoration. There is deliverance through praise. Give him all glory, all honor, all adoration. Bless the King of Kings. Bless the Lord of Lords. Bless the Ancient of Days. Adore him. Lift him high. Give him all glory, all honor, all adoration. Praise him. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah. The man of war, your mercy is endureth forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. Amen. The God of Abraham.
God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the almighty, all-sufficient God, the God who is great, the God who is strong, the God who is mighty, the one who can never be defeated, the one who can change all things, who can move from shame to glory. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight in the life of all your children, Father, please do something special. Set the captives free tonight. Show the devil, Lord God Almighty, that you are the great conqueror. At the end of everything tonight, my Father, my God, let every one of us sing a new song. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. I want you to prophesy to two or three people and say, the devil is in trouble in my life tonight. And if you believe that, then shout a big hallelujah. And then you may please be seated. Um, by 7 p.m. this night, the number of babies born during this Congress had increased to 23. And the girls are struggling very hard to catch up. So we now have 12 boys and 11 girls. <laughs> So, I think it is the girls who should shout praise the Lord tonight. And let the boys shout hallelujah. I want to salute all the fathers in faith in the land. Great and mighty men of God. Especially Bishop Michael Conker and Apostle Omabude and Dr. Mercy Sikel, among several others. These are the people who have done mighty things for God in the past, and they are still going strong. Thank you for honoring the Almighty God by coming here tonight. The Lord will continue to honor you and continue to take you from glory to glory. This convention has been a special one it will continue to be special. I will advise you to tell your friends who are coming only tomorrow that they should come early because there will be no empty seats tomorrow. I'm sure you know that yourself. When I was younger, we used to say among ourselves, we shall see what we shall see. That's a way of saying something mighty is coming. Tomorrow, in Jesus' name, we shall see what we shall see. I thought we would say amen to that. My ministration tonight again, like on Tuesday, is going to be in two sections. Two short ones. 
The first one, we want to speak to those who are candidates for deliverance, but who are not really qualified for deliverance. We will we'll talk to them for a few minutes, then we'll make an altar call, and when that has been settled, then we will go to the second section. Uh, in the second session, we will be doing some spiritual warfare. Um, the Almighty God is going to arise today. And when God arises, His enemies will be scattered. Tonight, I'm going to be talking on the Lord of hosts. Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10 Psalm 24, 7 to 10 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates And be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors And the King of glory shall come in Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty The Lord, mighty in battle the God we serve is not a civilian. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Like I mentioned to those of you who were here yesterday, when we talk about the military, the military can be divided basically into three parts. The Air Force, the ground troops, and the Navy. I have good news for you. God controls all the hosts, whether in heaven, whether on land, and even when underneath the earth. And so if you have your destiny threatened, he can send an angel, one of the hosts of heaven, to come and rescue you. In Acts chapter 12, from verse 1 to 12, 1 to 11 will be all right. Acts 12, from verse 1 to 11. The Almighty God recalls for us in his word of a man called Peter who was imprisoned and was going to be killed by a king who had killed others before to put an end to the ministry of Peter. But that night, the angel of the Lord showed up and the one who was supposed to be killed continued with his destiny. I have good news for somebody here tonight that every plan of the enemy to cut short your destiny shall fail. But God didn't just stop there. He didn't just deliver Peter from the one who wanted to terminate his destiny. God went ahead and terminated the terminator. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 20 to 24, Acts 12, 20 to 24, the very king who wanted to kill Peter was eaten by worms. Occasionally, we pray some prayers that some people may consider violent. Then like I've shared with you before, when we, were, when we first came to this campground and we were surrounded by all manners of snakes, anytime I enter into the rooms of the boys or the girls and I found a snake, I, I don't behave as a gentle dove. I get whatever is necessary to terminate the terminator. 
I'm praying for somebody tonight that anyone who wants to terminate your destiny before the sun rises shall be terminated. I still remember very clearly the story of a young man who was terminated in his place of work for no reason at all. Every report had been good, but then they just terminated him. And he came to the Holy Ghost service and God spoke, just as God is speaking to someone tonight. And God spoke and said, there is someone here, there's somebody very close to you who is responsible for all your problems. That that fellow is going to die and that you are not, uh, you are not to mourn. Apparently, the father was the one who was involved. The father who said, what was happening? This boy is getting bigger than I. And he got involved. The following week, the father died. And in the place of work, they wrote to this boy and said, we are sorry we made a mistake. Come back and be promoted. I decree one more time, whatever God has to do to remove anyone or anything standing between you and your goal shall be done tonight. If you have been troubled, troubled by the power of the air, I want to give you an assurance that my father is the Lord of hosts. He controls everything in the air. According to John chapter, uh, Joshua chapter 10, rather, Joshua chapter 10 from verse 1 to 11, the God I serve is the first one to throw bombs. You read the story, it will show you clearly that when Joshua was fighting some enemies that he could not even finish on his own, the Almighty God helped him by dropping big rocks on the heads of the enemies. Some of you will remember the story of a lady who the husband brought into the church because the husband suspected that she was responsible for all his problems. And uh, after a while, we didn't see the lady coming to church. And she, when we followed up, she told us that since she started coming to church, she couldn't fly again at night. I decree in the name that's above every other name, every force flying to meetings at night to discuss things against your destiny will never fly again. If you have problems, with forces on earth, if you have human beings working against your progress on the face of the land, remember the Almighty God said in Isaiah 54 from verse 15 to 17, Isaiah 54 from verse 15 to 17, and the Almighty God said, yes, they may gather together against you, but he said, because they are gathering not of me, they will all fall for your sake. The Almighty God said, there's no weapon fashioned against you that shall prosper. So it doesn't matter whether it's a witch doctor or a herbalist or whatever. It doesn't matter even if it's a big boss in your place of work that is coming against you as long as the Lord of hosts lives, any weapon they have fashioned against you will not prosper. And every attack of the enemy will go right back to sender. Oh, I can tell you stories, but I, I want to be very brief in part one so that we can move on to part two. Are you going through a storm? I have good news for you, the Lord of hosts is also the one who is in control 
He controls storms. And according to Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41, Mark 4, 35 to 41, the Bible tells us that even the wind and the sea obey him. So in the name that's above every other name, whatever may be the storm you are passing through, that storm will end tonight. But when we talk about repositioning, we're not just talking about deliverance from forces in the air, forces on land, forces by sea. Um, one of the fellows who, who prayed before me had already prayed for you that uh, all kinds of marine spirits that may be working against you from tonight onward, they will never be able to function again. But you see, the Almighty God can do much better than just deliver you. He can set you free by applying the law of substitution. You remember Proverbs chapter 11 verse 8. Proverbs 11 verse 8. says, the righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. In other words, if the Almighty God finds that the best way to set you free permanently is to replace the one who is trying to walk against you by substituting that same fellow for you, he will do it. A good story is found in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 to the end. Daniel 6 from verse 1 to the end. It tells us about people who ganged up against Daniel because they saw that the Lord was with him. He was making tremendous progress. And so they decided that they will get him thrown into the den of lions. Where the Almighty God intervened, Daniel came out of the den of lions alive and well. And the Almighty God didn't stop there. He decided to end the problem once and for all. So he moved on the king to send for all those who conspired against Daniel. And he asked them not only to come alone, but to come with their wives and their children. And he sent them down into the den of lions. I've told you the story before. The day before it went, lion was descending into the den of lions the lion saw him coming they were hungry and they were happy here comes food but the almighty god said to them no you can't eat this one because it's the son of the lion of judah and lions don't eat lions so the the, the, the lions we are very sad, but God said, wait till tomorrow, I will feed you. And when they pulled out Daniel alive without a scratch the following day, and the king sent for all these people under the inspiration of God, the king must have told them something must have happened to the lions in the day. Please go and find out for me whether my lions are still there. And the, the lions saw them coming. And they said to God, Are these also children of the Lion of Judah? God said, No, they are for food. The Bible said they were finished before they even got to the ground. I'm praying for somebody here today before the sun rises. By the law of substitution, all those who have been tormenting your life will be gone. But you see, that is why I, I, I had to preach this first section for you. Because there is a, a very important part for you to play. The Bible made it abundantly clear in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. It says, he that committed sin is of the devil. 
If you are living in sin, the Bible says you are of the devil. Oh, another translation says he who practices sin. It means the same thing. And if you belong to the devil, it will be difficult. It won't even be lawful to want to take you away from your owner. You know, many times we are praying for somebody who needs deliverance. And the devil will be arguing, how can you take this fellow away from me? He belongs to me. That's why you should not continue in sin. Because if you continue in sin, the devil can claim ownership. The devil can say you belong to him. And when we ask the Almighty God to set you free, we may have a little bit of problems there. I've told you before that if a demon is blocking your way, and we say in the name of Jesus, get out of the way, he has to obey because in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. But if the one blocking your way is an angel, an angel of God, sent to block your way because of your sinful ways. When we say, get out of the way, you spirit, in the name of, we will say, in whose name? You say, in the name of Jesus. And we say, but it's Jesus who asked me to stand here. We can move demons out of your way. We can move an angel. I will tell you a story, a very quick one. And then you make up your mind whether you want to remain the possession of the devil or you would rather come over to the side of God. Some of you have heard this story before. Years ago, there is this great chief somewhere in this state. Very well. And we had a common friend. And this chief became very sick. And the common friend came to me and said, Please, come and pray for my friend so that God may heal him. So I went. And I saw the way it was. I asked him, Are you a child of God? He said, Oh, yes, I am. He even talked about how many churches he has built. I prayed for him, nothing happened. Took my special prayer warriors, two of them then. I sent them to his place. I said, you go and pray for him. You're going to fast and pray. You're not to eat anything there. Even the water you are going to drink, you must take away from Lagos. They went, they fasted. For seven days and seven nights, nothing happened. So I made up my mind, I think God wants me to handle this case myself. So I decided I will, I will fast and pray for 27 days and 20, 21 days and 21 nights. And suddenly God spoke to me and said, my son, you want to fast? Fasting is good for you. But for this case, don't waste your energy. I said, why not, Lord? God said, it's not my child. It belongs to the devil. Ah, how fast him. He claims to be, God said, all right. Go and tell him the following. And God revealed a secret that no, nobody on earth could know. That this man had a case over a piece of land. And the owners, those people who could testify against him, were coming by sea. So he got a man to go 
and torpedo their boat. So they all drowned. The man who torpedoed their boats came to the chief. Ah, finish the job. Ah, the chief said, very well. Before I give you your money, come and have some food. And he has poisoned the food. The man ate the food, got home, and died. So the chief thought, secret, absolutely covered. You can cover your sin from man. You can cover it from the Almighty God because he's the all-seeing God. So I went to him and I told him what God said I should tell him. You know what he said? He said, don't come here again. And of course he died. I don't know your secrets. But God knows. God knows those who are his own. There's no room for pretense here. If you are not genuinely born again, if you claim to be born again and you are still living in sin, I beg you tonight, because part two is going to be a bit hot. That's why I'm doing part one first. If you want to give your life to Jesus, if you really, really want to say bye-bye to sin, come and stand before the altar. Let's pray for your salvation. Let the blood of Jesus wash you away, wash you clean. Let God take you away from Satan and translate you into the family of God. I'm going to count from 1 to 12. Before I say 12, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, run to the altar now. Whether in the auditorium here or in the old auditorium as the overflow, run to the altar now. God is waiting to translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. But the choice is yours. I'm counting now. One. Two. You can pretend to be a child of God when you are still secretly serving the devil. You can't hide anything from God. Come to him now. Let this case be resolved. Three. Four. Five. Six. Those of you who are clapping for Jesus, your hands will never wither. Seven. Eight. Nine. Hurry up. I know you are coming from a long distance, but you have to hurry up. Ten.
11 Now those of you who are ready before the altar begin to cry unto the Lord ask him to have mercy on you ask him to save your soul tell him you don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore ask him to move you into the family of God and those of you on the way pray as you are coming keep on coming quickly and then the rest of us please let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them let us pray that the one who saved our souls we save their own souls also let's pray for them that God will give them genuine salvation that they will also become members of the family of God intercede for them brethren intercede for them those of you in front cry unto the almighty God God save my soul forgive my sins I don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore go cry unto the almighty God he will answer your prayers those of you on the way you have to move now because I'm about to pray but make sure you get here before I finish praying thank you father in the mighty name of Jesus father I just want to say thank you for your word thank you for the power in your word that have brought forth these people thank you because of these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you you will no wise cast out they've come now please receive them have mercy on them lord let your blood wash them clean and lord receive them into the family of god write their names in the book of life and don't let them have anything to do with the devil anymore even from now on when they cry unto you father please answer them by fire in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen now those of you in front let me hear you shout hallelujah i'm rejoicing with you because from now on by the grace of god i'll be praying for you I'm going to need your names, your address, your prayer requests. The counselors are around you. They will give you cards to fill very quickly. And they will give me the information I want. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. We'll wait for you till you finish before we move on to part two. Thank you very much.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, counselors. When we talk about divine reposition, what God, God has, has in mind, mind is not just deliverance for the captives, even though that is part of it. But what God really has in mind during this Congress is to turn those who are being pursued to those who are now pursuing the pursuers. He wants to turn the hunted to become the one who will be hunting those who are hunting them. In 1 Kings chapter 19, if you read from verse 1 to 9, 1 Kings 19 from verse 1 to 8, rather, you know the story of Elijah. He was running from Jezebel, the wife of Ahab. But by the time we get to 1 Kings chapter 21, from verse 1 to the end, 1 Kings 21 from verse 1 to the end, particularly verse 20. When he had saw Elijah, he said, Have you found me, my enemy? And Elijah said, Yes, I have found you. We're going to be doing some prayers tonight. I'm going to beg you that you pray this prayer with all your hearts. You see, the Bible says clearly that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. That means, according to Bible scholars, Whatever you allow will be allowed. Whatever you refuse, whatever you reject, will be rejected. Some of us had watched as the devil had been doing whatever he wanted with our families. We look at some of these problems as if, well, they're not too big. A child will always be a child. And little by little, evil grows. Little by little, problems come. But in the name that's above every other name, every satanic manifestation in our families will be ending tonight. The almighty God said in his word in James chapter 4 verse 7 James 4 verse 7 that once you surrender your life to Jesus you submit to God your next action is to resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what the Bible says. That tells you that the devil is a coward. When you decide you're going to deal with the devil, he will run. We're going to run out the devil out of our families tonight. You know the story in Matthew chapter 15 from verse 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. It tells you of a woman who fought all the way through to get deliverance for her family. She came to Jesus Christ and said, my daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. And in spite of everything, every kind of hindrances, 
to obtaining a victory, she persisted. And she got a victory. We're going to pray. We're going to get victory tonight. In all our families. It's time to say enough is enough. I'll tell you the story of a young man who came to us at the age of 39. He said in his family, every male child dies at the age of 40. He said he's the oldest in the family, oldest male, and he was 39. He was about to enter into 40. That's when something told him, this problem must stop now. He came, we prayed, and more than 30 years later, he's still alive today. I'm begging you, not only because of yourself, but because of your children and your grandchildren. You're going to stand on your feet. You're going to pray like warriors now. You're going to lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say, Father. <laughs> hey, when you are dealing with the devil, you have to be violent too. Let me hear you say, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, every activity of the devil in my family must end tonight. Open your mouth and cry unto the Almighty God. Every activity of the devil in my life must end tonight. In, the, in my family, all this EU of barrenness, all this EU of loneliness, all this EU of failure at the point of success, every activity of the devil in my family must end tonight. My family must be repositioned away from the bondage of the enemy. Every activity of the enemy in my family must end tonight. Right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You're going to pray that prayer again. And you, I will tell you why you have to pray it more seriously. You had the testimony of a mother, six children, all of them no children. She didn't even get married until she said, "Enough is enough." The only fellow who will not pray this prayer the way it should be prayed is the one who is the fellow who is responsible. If you are the one responsible for all these kind of problems in your families, if you are the one, the, if you are the agent of the devil, then keep quiet. But if you are not, it, for the sake of your family, open your mouth and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every activity of Satan, 
in my family must end tonight. Tonight. Every activity of the devil in my family. Barrenness, loneliness, failure, stagnation, delay, sorrow, premature death, every activity of Satan in my family must end tonight. Must end tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And the next thing is we are going to pray for your hometown. When you read the book of Acts, chapter 8, you can read the old chapter, it's very beautiful reading. The Bible says it takes only one man to bring joy to a city. But as we read it further down, the Bible shows us the source of the problem of that city. There was a sorcerer there. who was proving to them that he was a great man. Everybody was respecting him. Until somebody came and brought the light. In your towns, in your villages, there are still forces of darkness. Behaving as if they are the owner of the land. We have to put an end to their reign. I didn't hear your amen. Not long ago, we decided to hold a program in my little town. We call it Ifewara for Christ. We went there, spent some days preaching the gospel, shining the light. Less than a week later, the Holy Spirit moved. And a discovery was made on the outskirts of the town. And they found a place where some people, occultic people, were killing people, dismembering them, and the police moved in. And light began to shine in my town. Tonight, I beg you because God is not relocating you for fun. He's relocating you so you can deal with all these forces of darkness. You're going to stand on your feet. You're going to cry to the Almighty God for your little town, for your village, for your root. You say, Father, 
In the mighty name of Jesus, every force of darkness operating in my village, in my town, I decree that they leave tonight. They must get up, they must get up, they must get up tonight, tonight. force operating in my village, operating in my town, operating in my route, Lord God Almighty, they must get out tonight. I decree in the name that's above every other name, all these agents of the devil walking against the progress of my village, of my town. We must go now. Thank you, Father. Lord God Almighty, every agent of the devil operating in my town, claiming to be the one who is in charge, I dislodge them today. I dislodge them today. I dislodge them today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Thank you, you are doing fine, but don't sit down yet because we, we must pray that prayer again. A child of God, a man of God, I'm sure he's present here tonight. Came to us not too long ago and said, Sir, every year in his village, somebody important must die. There's a force there that just hates progress. You become successful, get ready for death. We went there commanded whatever demons may be responsible to move. I thank God that since then, there has been no death. Give you another reason why you have to pray this prayer. And you can find out, you can check. Coronavirus came. And I cried to the Almighty God. I prayed for the whole nation. But I pray specially for my village. I have good news. Not a single one died in my village. One day we drove through my village. And my driver was pointing out to me one thing. He said, sir, nobody's wearing masks here. I told him there's no need. We have settled their case from the camp. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God. I said, Father, every agent of the devil in my village, in my town, ah, I clear them tonight. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. I clear them tonight. No more premature death. All forces against development in my village, in my town, I clear them tonight. I clear them tonight. I pray that they will not 
operate any longer. I destroy their, their camp. I uproot their altars. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. No more in my village, no more in my town. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please be seated, so shall it be. When it comes to a big one, you have to pray for your nation. You know, there is a saying that all it takes for evil to prosper. It's for those who know good and will not do it. It's not going to take easy, lazy kind of prayer to rescue a nation from the grips of forces of darkness. Took force, and I mean spiritual force, to bring Israel out of Egypt. If all is well with your nation, those of you who are here, no sickness, no problems, no famine, no hardship. If all is well with your nation, then please just join me in praying for my own nation. And we're going to cry to God that all these sufferings must end. It takes more than any man, no matter how well intentioned, to solve the problems of a nation. No matter how good our president may be, no matter how well-intentioned, there are forces of darkness beyond the ability of any man. It took only four years to build the expressway. Four years. Including the long bridge over Mashigram. It took more than seven years to repair. It took a while before it occurred to me. Hey, wait a minute. This is not an ordinary situation. There are certain forces that realized that if traffic is flowing freely here, then people will be able to come to programs here. That's when I took the matter to the Lord in prayer. I thank God he answered my prayer. to get Israel out of bondage. Some people had to die. Some people had to drown. Some people had to be uprooted. Stand on your feet. 
and cry to the Almighty God. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever you have to do to rescue my nation from the grips or forces of darkness, do it tonight, Lord. Open your mouth and pray. Whatever you have to do. To rescue my nation from forces of darkness. Whatever you have to do. Do it tonight, Lord. Your light must shine in this nation. You have to get rid of forces of darkness in every form. You have to get rid of kidnappers. You have to get rid of terrorists. My Father, my God, every force that is contrary to the well-being of Nigerians, of the habits of my nation. Father, you have to deal with them. Whatever you have to do, Lord, do it. Move into my nation, Lord. And do something. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Whatever you have to do, Lord, that peace may reign supreme in my nation, that everything may go well in my nation, that there may be progress, that there will be prosperity, that there will be peace, that there will be joy. Whatever you have to do, oh Lord, do it tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I was not close. But when God says he's repositioning you, it's so that you can help your neighbor to be free. He said, these signs are follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. That's the first thing he said you have to do. So I want you to join hands with your neighbor. If he's free, no problem. God will make him stronger in the Lord. But if there is anything that is satanic left in the life of the fellow you are holding, that thing has to go now. So you lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, in the life of your child that I'm holding, anything that is of satanic origin, flush it out tonight. Go ahead, pray, cry unto the Almighty God. Anything that is of satanic origin, in the life of this your child that I'm holding, Father, flush it out tonight. Flush it out tonight. Flush it out tonight. Flush it out tonight. Anything that is of satanic origin in the life of this your child, flush it out tonight. Thank you, my father.
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Just one more prayer, and this is for yourself. <laughs> and this time you're going to confront the devil. The Bible says if you resist him, he will flee. <laughs> so you will lift your, vo your voice to the Almighty God with all your strength. I say in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Satan. I command you, take your dirty hands off me. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, I command you, take your dirty hands off me. Ramu sheke randri mukurundi ke makanta shanta. I command you, Satan, take your dirty hands off me. From now on, take your dirty hands off me. Thank you, Father. Satan, you take your dirty hands off me. Take your dirty hands off me. In every form. Command you. Take your dirty hands off me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Now I'm, now I'm about to pray for you, but before we do that, do, do I have the band there standing by? We need to sing one song. It's a song we, we sing in those days. A, it's a warrior song. It says, in Jesus' name, every name was bad. Tonight, every name must bow to Jesus. So we will sing that song for two minutes. Then I will pray for you. And then you'll be free to go. So, over to you, Ben. Thank you. In Jesus' name, everything was fine. Everything was fine. Everything was fine. Every 
your hands to the most high God. Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, I thank you for tonight. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is of the devil in the bodies, in the souls, in the spirit, in the homes, in the villages, in the towns, in the nations of these people uproot tonight. Whatever you have to kill, Father, go ahead and kill. Whatever you have to drown, Father, tonight, drown them all. or anyone try in any way whatsoever to tamper with the destiny of these your children my father and my God before this week runs out destroy them all In the homes of all your children, anything called premature death, don't let us hear it again. Let barrenness be gone. Let loneliness be gone. Let poverty be gone. Let hardship be gone. And every enemy of our nations, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, kidnappers, terrorists, and all kinds of evildoers, destroying the nations, wherever they may be, Father, uproot them. force of darkness wherever they may be hiding uproot them Lord of hosts arise tonight scatter the enemies of your children and let your name be glorified from now on Whenever the enemy sees your children coming, let the enemies run. Thank you, my father. Let our tomorrow be all right. And let us serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear a victorious shout of hallelujah. Yes. 
see you tomorrow.
my power cannot do. He has done it for me. What my knowledge cannot do. He has done it for me. What my power.